Hi, for this video what we are going to do is we're still working with confidence intervals and um, for this one we are going to use the TI Inspire graphing calculator. What we have here is they give us the actual data that was gathered when they calculated. So it tells us that the data set represents the scores of 12 randomly selected students on the SAT math scores. Assume the population standard deviation is 103 and the test scores are normally distributed. And we're going to create a 99% confidence interval. Now again, when reading through, you want to be looking for key things to see which kind of interval that you're looking for. Since we're dealing with data of test scores, most likely we're looking for um, the population mean. We're trying to figure out something about the population mean based on this sample. So because we are looking for the mean, that's what we could do with these values, um, we would use either a Z interval or a T interval. And remember the difference between the two is which kind of standard deviation you have. Since we have the population standard deviation, this is sigma, we know that we have to use the Z interval. So remember the conditions for a Z interval. You have to know the population standard deviation. It is imperative that you know this population standard deviation. Even if you're using your calculator, your calculator will prompt you for the population standard deviation if you're using a Z interval. So we have the population standard deviation. We know that sigma is um, 103. We have to have a random sample. So we know that it's randomly selected. And then the last condition that we have to have in order to create a Z interval is the central limit theorem has to be able to kick in. So our sample size either has to be greater than or equal to 30, which if we look, we only have 12. So 12 is not large enough for any population, but since it tells us that we can assume that it's normally distributed, um, we're okay. So even though the n is not greater than or equal to 30 since it's normally distributed a sample size of n equals 12 is okay if it did not say normally distributed you would not run a z interval because you don't know for sure what your population looks like so with this if you recall the formula for coming up with the z interval is x bar plus or minus the zc or the z star whichever one your textbook uses times sigma divided by the square root of n or you could separate that out if it's easier for you to see you can do x bar minus your error um, with your mean in between and then x bar plus your error where the error is equal to zc over times sigma divided by the square root of n. And I'm just giving the two most commonly that I've used or that I've seen um, in textbooks. So yours may differ slightly if you're using a different textbook, but just so that you guys understand the formula that's going on. Um, remember, in order to do this, we have to know x bar. And so if you read through here, they don't give this to us. So if you were doing hand calculations for this, um, you would have to find x bar first, so you would actually have to go through and find x bar. And that would just be the sum of all of your x values divided by n. This is what is known as a point estimate. So this is our estimate for the entire population. We know that most of the time our sample mean is not exactly the same as the population mean. But we're trying to use our sample to help us to get a range of values. So with this, since it says a 99% confidence interval, if you have to show out the work and you need to find the 99% confidence interval, remember that you can either do inverse norm and do one half, one minus your level of confidence as a decimal, zero, one to get your ZC. Um, so this would give you your Z star or ZC depending upon which one your textbook uses. Or you can use the table value, so 99% is 2.576. Um, so if we were writing out and showing out the work, we would use 2.5, so our Z star 
or ZC, depending upon your textbook, is 2.576. And that's what we would plug into our calculator or into here if we were doing hand calculations. The X bar, like I said, you would actually have to go through an add. I'm going to use the calculator to help me do this. Um, so the X bar we're going to get from the calculator, and I will fill that in after I run the test. The population standard deviation, remember, was 103, and our sample size is 12. So if you watched my other video um, that talked about how to find um, the Z interval in the TI Inspire, it gave us the stats last time. This time we don't have the statistics. We don't have the X bar for this. So we can actually take and plug this into our calculator. Remember that anytime we're dealing with a list, and I'm just going to pull up my calculator, I already put it in there, so I'm going to go to option four, which is current. But if you were starting from scratch, you would just start with a new document and then select the spreadsheet screen. So open up a spreadsheet screen. I went ahead and put all of the information in here. Um, I verified it before starting to make sure that all the values were the same. I just feel it's easier for you to see if I use this. Um, so as you can see, I have all 12 points put in. Once you do that, we're going to do control and I, and I'm going to add a calculator screen. I prefer to work in the calculator screen. You can do this in the spreadsheet screen. I just, it's my preference to put it in here. Uh, so then we're going to go to menu and statistics. And this time we're going to choose, oops, it clicked on it for me. So I'm going to choose statistics and confidence intervals and a Z interval. And this time it asks us, remember last time we picked stats because we knew it. This time we have the data. So we're going to click OK. And the Z interval prompts you to put in your population standard deviation. So we have to put in the 103. So this is kind of the default to help you figure out which one to use because your calculator automatically prompts you in a Z interval for the population standard deviation. And the only variable that I have, I just right arrowed over, was the SAT scores. That's what I named my list. And then we would come down and put in our level of confidence. For this one, we wanted 99% confidence, which is just going to give us a wider interval. And it tells us that our margin of error is 76.58. So this is really within about 77 points um, from the mean. And right here, it gives us our X bar. So the 662.5 is given to us as well as the interval. So I'm going to go ahead and record all of that information on my screen. So the 662.5 was my mean. And then if we use our formula, like I said, if you need to show work, you would just do X bar plus or minus Z star or ZC, whichever your textbook uses. Um, and then you would plug in your values. So my X bar would be 662.5 plus or minus, and we found from the table the 2.576, or from the calculator the inverse norm, times 103 divided by the square root of 12. And that ended up giving us our confidence interval of 585.911 to 739.089. And this is a very large... Um, confidence interval and a lot of that there's two reasons why this is so widespread um, because that's almost 150 points the reason for that is number one we have a very small sample size and the smaller your sample size the larger your error is going to be um, the other reason is because we did a 99% confidence interval the 99% also influences the width of the confidence interval so again, to recap how to put this in, um, to interpret your answer for this, we can say with 99% confidence, and then you always insert the context of the problem. So we can say the mean, and if we go back up, if we need the context again, remember that we're talking about the SAT math scores. So the mean SAT math scores... are between 585.911 and 739.089.
So when you're interpreting, you always tell your level of confidence and you always put the context or the problem that you're dealing with. So for this one, just to recap, we use the TI Inspire to help us find a confidence interval when we are actually given the data points. As always, thanks for watching. Please continue to make sure to check out all of my content. Um, it is growing constantly, so if you don't see what you need, please message me and let me know what you need. As always, thanks for watching.